Hello and welcome to a Taylor's Tales podcast. This is Chris's Corner. I'm your host, Chris Taylor, and welcome back to a brand new episode. This week, I'm going to be talking about a delectable medley of topics. As always, throwing a few curveballs out there. But what I want to start off with is the level of quality coming out of YouTube at the moment. It's a bit of a, a range. A lot of stuff that you'll see, there's a lot of podcasts out there uh, that are just getting mass produced over and over. And I love the quality of the podcast, by the way. So some of my favorites, I'm seeing the, the camera, the lighting, everything around them, increase the sound. People take real care of them. That can't be controversial. It can't be controversial to say, I want my transgender son or daughter to have the best fake private parts they can have. And it seems to be that podcasting kind of took over uh, the, the YouTube space as well as Spotify and other platforms, uh, including myself. And I find it really interesting because for me personally, I love podcasts, I love looking at them, I love the quality. But something for me about YouTube, that there's also quality filmmakers. It's a different aspect of YouTube. And to me, one of those YouTubers who comes immediately to mind, obviously, there's Casey Neistat, who is a film maker who came to YouTube and created content that has changed that con you know that the platform for forever and I made a full YouTube video slash podcast on that previously go look that up I'll probably link it as well so that you can get an idea of how that was but for me another creator who comes to mind who isn't given in my opinion the credit due to his great creation is Chris Broad or better known as the Abroad in Japan channel. Probably one of the best channels out there for foreign travel, encompassing an entire country and showing the best and worst aspects of it. Abroad in Japan, for me, is an experience personally. It gives you an insight that's going to help you. And for, you, for myself, somebody who's going to Japan in October, I have got so much information from his channel alone that gives me all the tips and tricks to being able to survive in that country, but also seeing the best parts of it, and also trying not to offend people along the way. But what you will get is the stare of disapproval. <laughs> That's another thing, is learning and being adaptable to all environments. Something that I'm doing at the moment is using Duolingo to be able to get a basic understanding of the Japanese language so that I can go in and be able to ask for things and to be able to get a basic understanding of how to get around the place. There's also the travel system around Japan, fantastic in terms of train lines, in terms of airlines, in terms of public transport. And it's all down to his videos that show you the vlog life where it's just from his perspective on a day-to-day -day basis, but there's also his movies. And that's what they are. They are films. They are documentaries where he goes, he does, for instance, the journey across Japan. Play the intro. <laughs> Uh, and he also does the documentaries of certain aspects of Japan, such as where you've got um, the nuclear power plant that blew up and the, tide, the whole town was destroyed by it. And it's an amazing, and I'm blanking out on the name of the town itself. And oh, Fukushima, there it is. Fukushima comes to straight to mind as soon as I start thinking of it. So, Fukushima, an amazing documentary on how it affected a town and actually gives it a humanization of. Uh, what happens when nuclear goes wrong, but also how to deal with it correctly. And the Japanese government, in some ways, you could blame them for a lot of things, you know, an aging population, all of this, but they did a fantastic job in being able to contain something that could really have been awful if you compare it, for instance, in terms of Chernobyl. A very, probably something that comes to mind every time somebody mentions nuclear or um, any sort of nuclear energy, people think of Chernobyl and the disaster that happened around there. But I think what Chris does is kind of show the day-to-day -day life of the people who are surrounding the area and how it affected the community and how it affected people's lives. And that's really interesting, diving in and getting a domestic view of the place, but also understanding that they're just human beings at the end of the day. We're all so similar. We all want to live our lives. We all want to be able to get the best out of our community and be able to go on and not be affected by huge events like a nuclear disaster. But also, I think there's something about his filmmaking that gives you a real 
beautiful look to the country of Japan. And I don't see many filmmakers outside of the BBC, for instance, BBC, give Chris a channel. I think his channel is just as good, if not better, than some of the BBC documentaries. Now, I'm looking at David Attenborough in this sort of scenario. When David Attenborough goes to a foreign nation or he goes to visit animals, he gets some amazing shots of those animals and the surrounding countryside. I think Abroad in Japan does just as well maybe if not better because of the budget that he's running on. He's doing this through funding purely off the fans and the people who love his content. The BBC has a huge budget. It's a nation channel. And yet in comparison to Chris's channel, I believe Chris edges it just purely off the basis that he can do the voiceover for it. He does it in person. He funds it all himself. He has a little crew that he moves around and they're the same people most of the time. He also encompasses friends into the adventures to be able to make it a little bit more fun. Challenges. Um, he even encompasses exercise and showing how effective and fun it can be when doing something completely different, where Chris has gone from somebody who didn't exercise at all to someone who travelled across the entire nation of Japan via bike. And it's just, boom, like, these ideas are fantastic because it, it gets the fans to think, well, maybe I should try something like that. Maybe I will not sit, uh, sit down and just watch this video. Maybe I should go out and cycle or swim or run or etc. You know, the, the, there's this amazing thing behind it. It's kind of semi-inspirational because he's just a normal person from the UK who moved across to Japan and sort of just took it by stride, said, I like this nation, I like the challenge of going into the unknown, and I like the idea that he started off as a teacher and then became a YouTuber. He had the job, he got to know the, the local area, and it was a side hustle that became his main job. And he does a fantastic, fantastic uh, way of making us all really care, not only about characters like Ryotaro and Natsuki, Happy birthday, Ryotaro san. Happy birthday, Ryotaro san. Happy birthday, go fuck yourself. Sayonara, Ryotaro. Also, his surrounding characters from, for instance, uh, <laughs> oh god, the Trash Taste podcast, which uh, those guys are brilliant as well, encompassing Joey, encompassing y Yarn, and also, of course, Connor. And I love that, and I love his relationship and how he brings in so much energy and shows that British snark towards uh, how you would live and how you would react to, to most of the surrounding area. And I think that for me personally, without his channel, I don't know if there's another person out there who puts out content that covers a nation that you can understand where you're gonna go, you're gonna find what's gonna be, ex what to be expected and how to get from place to place. And at the same time, save yourself money, save yourself time, and be able to enjoy your holiday that you're gonna go there. The amount of people I hear on the Abroad in Japan podcast giving information on how their travels have been improved or they've avoided something or the, they've given a story that's going to help other people when listening in to this is incredible. It's human beings helping out human beings with stories that are going to be able to help them. One of the, the great ones that I remember that comes come straight to mind is a couple who ne who got robbed, basically. Not robbed, but their, their credit cards got basically, you know, filled to the brim with payments from a random night out. It's very interesting to know that if you go into these clubs filled with very beautiful women uh, who serve you drinks, that you can be drugged by these women and that they have some sort of rehypno in them or a drug in them and then they abuse that by you being out of it and they will charge your credit cards over and over again. Now this story has a happy ending because a gentleman learned from this story and he decided to go to one of these clubs deliberately but he'd taken all his credit cards and, and card payments out of his pockets and he just brought a limited amount of cash with him. He wanted to go in there be abused by the, per the these women, and then he'd be uh, they'd go to try and charge his credit cards by them taking it out of his wallet, and then they'd find that there was no credit cards, there was no wallet, there was just cash in there, and he would return to his hotel a hero to his companions 
and also be able to re- regale these fantastic stories to you, the listener and the viewer. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! And I thought to myself, I had to retell that because for me personally, hearing stories like that, at people learning from bad experiences and turning them against the people who did these bad experiences in the first place is fantastic. Now, this is a specific part of Shinjuku slash Tokyo area where if you go out to these clubs, you will be. Uh, so be very aware if you are traveling into that area, be wary about these specific sort of idol clubs. Be, be very wary that you could be uh, in for an eye out. For me personally, I don't drink very often. For me, if I'm going to go for a drink, it will not be in something like that. It will be a bar that's in one of those lovely uh, alleyways called Piss Alley. Um, <laughs> that's another one that Chris got from Chris as well, which is fantastic. And getting an understanding of the local area without ever actually having to travel to Japan, which is brilliant. Being able to understand which parts of Japan you're going to be able to cover within a short period of time. So I've wanted to get that in the beginning of the podcast because I cannot credit that channel enough for not only being a filmmaker and a cinematographer, but also being, in my opinion, one of the best YouTube channels in the entirety of YouTube and continuing to do that since 2013. So keep fighting the good fight, Chris Chris Broad and uh, the Abroad in Japan channel. And I know maybe one day if I continue to pump out the content, you'll see this and you'll say, what a wanker. <laughs> what, uh, what's a wanker? Nah, I'm a visual learner, so that's very helpful. Thank you. Moving on, uh, I just wanted to talk about in the second half of the podcast, a little bit of friendship uh, advice, but also talking about friends in general. And for me personally, one of those things about being a, a good friend, one of those things that, that for me personally, something that I, I try to do in, in all aspects is be there for people. Be there for people when it's bad as well as when it's good. I'm talking about this because I feel that it's really easy to be there in the good times. It's really easy to say you're a good friend when everything's going well for everybody. And when someone asks you something that wouldn't necessarily attract you and you say, no, that's to me doesn't show you as a good friend. Maybe you have a lot going on in your life and that's fine. That's that's fine with me. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have the opportunity that somebody asks something of you, And if you're thinking to yourself that you'd rather not, you'd rather go spend your time doing something else, maybe that that friend may not see the good in you and they may write you off. Now, I'm not saying use and abuse your friends like they're just useful tools. I'm saying that sometimes you've got to do a little bit of suffering in order to show people that you're there for them in the good and in the bad. So, little little seriousness there from me. God! Now I'm always smiling. What's going on in my life? You know, I'm having a great time. My life is fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, the summer at the moment, brilliant. Um, Job's going well. Life's going well in general. So I have nothing to complain about on my side of things. Well, I freaking And at the moment, running, weightlifting is going really well. I'm currently... Uh, putting in around 23, 24 miles a week. I'm trying to keep it at this consistency so that by the end of the year, I can hit around 1,200 miles for the year. Slight increase, you know, a nice little increase from last year going at 1,100 miles. I think it was around that 1,100, 1,150 around that. So increase not by huge chunks, but by small chunks that you can replicate over and over again. One of those things that I see is people trying to hit PBs constantly. It's not possible. You can't consistently hit PBs, personal bests in running or weightlifting if you're trying week in, week out. I don't think that's a good idea. I also think that leads to injury in terms of for any sport. If you're trying to hit your personal best every week, your body will at some point just collapse. Now, this is coming from the guy who runs and weightlifts every, you know, I'm either running or I'm weightlifting every single day. Now, 
I've found the way for my body to be able to re react to that in a way that's going to not hinder me. I'm not going to get injured. I'm not going to have any pain. One of those things that I've discovered recently, it's not an ice bath, but it's a cold bath. <laughs> I know, I don't have enough ice in the house to be able to make an ice bath. What am I doing with my life? Wim Hof would be just scurry. He'd be just, <laughs> he'd hate me for it. Um, but the idea for me is that after a long run like I did today I did 11 miles um, at a really slow 807 pace really really slow because of the humidity at the moment I don't know if you can tell I'm sweating already um, just because of it's not it's not hot it's like 23 24 degrees but the, the air's just thick you know you know when it's, there's not really a lot of sun but you're just sweating I was soaked by the end of it but point being is by the time I got back um, I felt I could feel my body I could feel the the joints you know it, no no pain but you you just feel it and one of those things that stops me from having any serious injury obviously stretching but getting into a cold bath and doing hot cold therapy so I'll sit in a bath just filled with cold water up to my chest um, and I'll do that for 10 minutes and I'll just set a timer today it was 12 minutes but it's not not it doesn't matter it's just getting the 10 minutes in there getting the body used to that helps reduce inflammation on the knees on the joints and then I'm going to go into the shower and shower myself off with hot warmer water to be able to get that back the blood flowing back into the the scene and also it's it's helpful for the heart rate like for me personally one of those things that I got from Goggins was that you should focus on your training should be on your heart rate and how quickly you can go from 170 180 all the way back down to for me personally my average heart rate of like 50 and for me, after a really long run like that, my heart rate goes back to around 80 slash 70 within around 30 minutes after the run. It's quite quick. It goes boom, back, back down. I will put it to the highest of highs of around 180, 170. Uh, and then by the end of the run, I'm hitting on 160, 150. And then when I get back home after I've showered, it is at 180 slash 70. And then by the end of the evening, it should be at 60s around that and then by the next day it's back to to 51 now this is an intriguing thing because for me it allows me to really quickly regain some sort of energy i'm recording this after i've done my run and i've found a new system and i don't know about you like i love this idea of systems i, I restarted uh, reading uh uh automatic habits no what what am i talking about it's uh oh god this is where my brain kicks in. Da, 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 da. Auton no, it's, why is it? Something habits, God, I'm gonna have to look it up now. I've got the book in the other room, but I'm gonna quickly do this as quick as I can without, uh, oh my God, how do, how do I forget this? Auto, 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 tick habits, habits, something along those lines. This is my brain just kapoofing. Automa atomic habits god see you see you see what happens with my brain there like of course it's atomic habits it's brilliant it's a oh my god it's only nine quid on amazon at the moment that's fantastic um yeah so i was rereading atomic habits and i was getting into this idea of systems again where i need to re-implement uh within my life systems and and understanding how i can really it's, it's not about just one-offs like i can run a marathon boom like that's great but can you run a marathon again and can you increase the time and can you get better and can you you know i, I always have these ideas in my ha head of big goals but it's the day-to-day -day that kind of builds builds up to that um and, it, and this is some, something that's coming into my mind a little bit what are my canon events you know from spider-man into this uh, across the spider-verse christ how many people must have listened you know out of the people from last week's podcast listening in and being like it's across the spider-verse you fucking moron you moron um not into the spider-verse i was like i i didn't realize it until i watched the edit later i was like oh god i must have been seriously tired christ um but <laughs> but back to it the idea of what am i going to do that's going to i'm going to look back on and be like right that that use of time was going to to be the way forward to build up these habits and one of those things at the moment for me it's trying to get back to that 10 pages a day every day, trying to do Duolingo, trying to um, really think that I am a reader. 
I am a lang a, a linguistic person. They, I am a language person because by saying these things rather than saying I'm trying to read is you're identifying your someone as someone who does it rather than uh, someone who's trying to do it. It's the same with smoking. You're by saying you're quitting smoking. It doesn't help by saying you're not a smoker. It does identify you with a group of people that you're trying to associate rather than with the group that you're already a part of, which is the smokers. This, to me, is fantastic psychology. I mean, some people call it pseudoscience, but, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. If it's going to help people, then it's going to help people. And that, to me, is really, really aces. If you can get into the small changes, and that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. I mean, you know me with, with my exercise. That's not a problem at the moment. I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. I'm at a good weight of averaging around 87, 88 kg. If I go... And I, I do want to cut a little bit, but I don't, it doesn't matter to me as much, you know what I mean? Like, as long as I'm sort of enjoying the gym, feeling good in my body, I don't have body dysmorphia as well, which is what I'm trying to keep going. I don't want to be the person who struggles with that later on and looks at myself in the mirror and is, is struggling with what I see. And I'm seeing that all the time across uh, a lot of social media people having to, to get external validation instead of realizing that they're enough within. And that's something that I'm really interested in in stoicism as well. My friend Alex Schoen got me back into that a couple of years ago, back in 2020 when we did a full podcast on it. And for me at the moment, I'm trying to listen to more Ryan Holiday so I get into the stoic lifestyle of you can't you can't run away from things. You've got to be able to tackle them here and now. And I, it really hit me because I was doing some work and I was sat at my desk and I was just kind of like, I was tired. I was like, I don't really want to be here. I don't want to be doing this. I'm bored. Like, this is, this is really tough. Like, I'm not enjoying this at the moment. I wish I was abroad somewhere. And I thought to myself, well, you know, you by saying that in your mind, you've already shot yourself in the foot. You're struggling. You're thinking that your mindset's going to be different by going to a place somewhere else. The truth is, as someone who's traveled a lot, is that your mindset stays the same. The environment may change, but that doesn't immediately change your mindset. And that's a difficult thing to accept, is that you may be going through tough times and you're thinking, well, if I just get out of the environment, if I just um, you know, stop being in this, and it's true, being in an, a negative environment doesn't help, but if you're in if you're constantly doing that, if you're constantly thinking, well, if I just run away from the scenario, you're always gonna to have to come back to it. And I, th I think this is a message for myself as well as other people. It's kind of interesting to think, well, I need to find within. And I was having a conversation with a really close friend yesterday uh, about, I need to be happy now, damn it. And I am like fucking so lucky to be in the position that I'm in that day-to-day -day life for me is really positive. But the problem is, is like, there are moments where I'm like, oh, I'm just tired. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be right. Yes, physically, mentally exhausted, but you need to find the joy in these moments. Find the, the toughness and understand why you're here and why you're going to do it. But also look inwards and find the happiness within. And this is why meditation, again, something that I'm trying to create a system around. I am somebody who meditates. I am not trying to meditate. Again, association, silly things like this. But the, the idea from Atomic Habits, who, again, I got reminded about this about a month ago from somebody I work with. And I was like, fuck, I need to get back into this, you know? I need to get back into the mindset of systems, of working towards miniature goals. And as I said in the previous podcast, like the little things in life that really make you smile and being unable to get to that point is being able to build systems around them. This part of my life, this little part is called happiness.
does sound a little bit, you know, dry, dull, like, oh god, freaking day-to-day life, it's so tough, and I have to create a, a structure around it. It's like so many people uh, thrive off uh, one minute being uh, able to just do something off a whim. For me personally, I don't like that. I, I like structure. I like this idea of repeat over and over and over again because you build upon it. And something that I have noticed is that if you're undisciplined in that ability to rinse and repeat, yes, go change within the moment if it's going to benefit other people as well, make someone else happy but as well. But you know in yourself as well, deep down, that having structure, that having that lifestyle of, I know what I'm gonna be doing this weekend and next weekend and the week after, it's allowing you to be able to build a foundation of just not rigidity but you know who you are you know what you're going to be doing and it settles you and you can settle within that and yes you can change you can always allow life to change with you but if you can control what you can control do it because there's so many things that we can't control out there externally you know there's so many things in life where people are worried about politics they're worried about train strikes they're worried about things that they can't control and the truth is is that you can't there's nothing you can do about that and it's best not to worry about those things because they will always happen if there's one thing about human history is history repeats itself over and over again and if you are getting angry about things that are going to repeat over and over again then you will consistently be angry or upset with those things enough of me lecturing about you i'm also going to kind of just take a step back as well i love doing this podcast i love doing the the lo-fi slash music mixes and i don't know if you recently saw but my relaxing kingdom hearts music mix was just put out so if you haven't listened to it already please go listen to it it's uh sat at around 2.6k views at the moment it's doing really well it's something that i really enjoy putting together because for me personally kingdom hearts obviously from podcasts I put out before means a lot to me it's video it was like my childhood video game and the music that came with it is still with me to this day that puts me in a extremely positive mood because of the vibes because of what it means to me and because of the history behind it and I think that you the listener the viewer if you are interested in just relaxing while you're working having something sat in the background sometimes people can work with it sometimes people can't work with it but having something relaxing there for you to take you down a notch and like I've said before put like not having the shoulders up to the ears and being all oh, too much in life and I was like <laughs> okay thanks um, <laughs> and and allowing that to uh, relax Ooh, and you just feel that just kind of oh, life is okay things are good life is good everything's gonna be fine and oh god I, th- I feel like I accidentally quoted Theo Von there like it, it, he said recently he's not someone I'd normally go to for life advice because he's just so damn funny but he did say like it's gonna be okay the thing you're thinking of right now it's gonna be okay the thing after that it's gonna be fine thing after that it's gonna be fine too and I love that this mindset because it's so easy to feel anxious and and frustrated around things that you have no way to control over and so this is why I'm such a big fan of structure because it allows you to take control of your own life and this is why I love Jocko Willink and David Goggins and all of these people who inspire me because they took control of their own lives and by doing so, they inspire millions. But by doing so, that they show that if you have a foundation of structure and you have a lifestyle that you love, again, that's a Jordan Peterson thing there. If you love what you're doing, if you love the things that you're doing, it's going to be, become effortless. It's why, I, for me, lifting weights, running, it's really easy. It's like, I, I can do it. And I'll do this until I'm like 90 years old because I love it, because it puts me in the zone, because it takes me away from everything else and takes all of my frustration and anger and it just generates it into energy and I just feel more alive and the endorphins kick in and I'm just a different person afterwards and I think that if you're this far into the podcast you are too and if you can take that step 
and find the structure that you're looking for and find the fun things, the films that you're going to watch, the ways of life. You can have a great time. And I think that's a really good way to end the podcast. So, hope you've enjoyed this podcast as always. I hope to see you this time next week. This has been a Taylor Taylor podcast. This has been Chris's Corner. I've been your host, Chris Taylor. And as always, I'll see you this time next week. Bye now. Your pussy killed my son! <laughs> <laughs>